Intel recently released their Raptor Lake refresh range of CPUs, their 14th gen. In comparison to its predecessor, the 13th gen, it offers an increased core count for selected SKUs and marginally higher clock speeds. And in this video, we're going to put it to the test in one of the most demanding applications, Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to take the 14700K CPU and test it against its equivalent in the 13th gen, but perhaps more interestingly, we're also going to compare it against the 10th gen CPU. This is the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching. And let's get started. I was able to do these tests as I was recently at Wired to Fire's headquarters in Dorking in the UK. Wired to Fire is a computer company specializing in PCs for flight simulation. And my thanks once again to Dan, who helped me with the testing and provided access to the necessary hardware, etc. Thank you, Wired to Fire. Thank you, Dan. To capture the data and produce the reports, I'm using the freeware application CapFrameX. Shortly, we'll be having a look at the results, but we won't be discussing all the aspects or items reported on. So if you're looking for more information, visit the CapFrameX website, link in the notes below. You'll find the download there as well. And they have a variety of different articles explaining all the different parameters and options for settings. To give the results context, here are the parameters. It was a flight over London at 3000 feet with photogrammetry on in PMDG 737-700. Each test for each processor was run three times using a sample rate of 300 seconds. No overclocking was applied, hags are on, and during the test 50% was in the cockpit and 50% was an external view. And here are the settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator, its default ultra. The anti-aliasing mode was TAA, and we're running at 1440p for all the tests. And as indicated, we're using DX11. All the individual parameters are at default ultra. The weather used was the few clouds preset. And finally, let's just have a quick review of the different PC specs used during the test. Obviously, the 10th gen was using DDR4 memory, whilst 13th and 14th gen was using DDR5. All tests were with the NVIDIA RTX 4090. For the 10th gen, we used the 10900K as we didn't have access to a 10700K. Whilst I don't show the results here, a quick side note that applies to both the 13th and 14th gen. The difference between the 13700 and 13900 and 14700 and 14900 respectively in Microsoft Flight Simulator was marginal at best and often indistinguishable. Let's move on now to the results. And as always, it should be viewed that these results are indicative as they will vary from system to system and from configuration to configuration. Let's start off by establishing a baseline with the 10900K. The 10900K showed itself as a fairly consistent performer. Out of 300 seconds, only half a second recorded some stuttering, which I know is a scenery load over London. It averaged 45.2 frames per second. In comparison, we saw the 13700K was equally as consistent. There was a measurable and noticeable uplift in performance at an average of 63.2 frames per second. And with the dips in performance, or the 1% low average of 36.9, considerably improved on the 10900K. This graph also shows the fairly noticeable difference between cockpit views and external views. About halfway through the test, we switched from cockpit to external. And the line graph reflects that uplift in FPS. Turning now to the 14700K, we see an average FPS or frames per second of 66, so not a significant change over the 13th gen, although we did witness an improvement in the 1% lows. In fact, the results are so close to the 13th gen that Dan and I had to run this a number of extra times just to confirm results. So let's now have a look at a summary. Let's initially compare the 14th to the 13th generation CPUs. And moving from the 13700K to the 14700K produced a nominal improvement of 4.4%. 4 
from 63.2 to 66 fps. So the long and the short of it is simply if you already have a 13th gen CPU, perhaps a 13700 or a 13900, it really doesn't make much sense at all to consider an upgrade to the 14th gen. At this sort of performance level, well, you're not even going to notice. And the money it will cost you, if you're dead keen to spend it, well, you'd be better off spending it elsewhere. Conversely, if you're on a much older CPU, maybe 10th gen, 9th gen and so on, well, in this instance, there's a considerable uplift by moving to the 14th gen CPU, or even the 13th gen, something like the 13900K, may well be priced slightly more advantageous now that there's another generation of CPUs out in the market. And of course, as I've already covered in an earlier video, the AMD 7800X3D is also a very attractive option. My personal recommendation, if you were going to plumb for the 14th gen CPU, well, I'd go for the 14700K. It's slightly less expensive than the 14900, and you're going to get just about exactly the same performance. Now, I accept that we could have discussed various other aspects of this test. But I think the base results and the gaps or lack of speak for themselves. I think it's worth mentioning again that you should consider these results indicative and not set in stone, as a variety of other factors will apply. Well, I hope you found this information useful. Thank you as always for joining me. It's been a pleasure having you on board. Stay well, take care. I'll see you all again very soon. And ciao for now.